Hi, I'm Pastor Jeff Clater. Welcome to our midweek Advent service online and at home. You are at home right now. We are deliberately doing these midweek services virtually because we want your home to be a little church. In this season of Advent, we wanna sanctify our homes and our tables as altars. We're going right now in Advent from one sanctuary or two sanctuaries to hundreds of sanctuaries. Wherever you are at is a sanctuary, it's a little church. It could be your house, it could be an apartment where you live, maybe even you're in a dorm room, but that is a sacred place. And we wanna prepare you for that right now to get your space ready to be a sacred place for worship in this, uh, in this virtual service. We're in a series called The Light Has Come, and we're simply following the order of the candles. Each candle has a different theme, and we're following those candles and that theme with each candle. So make sure you have your Advent wreath out if you have one. We've been giving them away too. You may have that Advent wreath. Get it out, get your matches or lighter out. Uh, if you don't have one of those, just get any candle out because light is important in this worship service as we focus on Jesus Christ, the light of the world. The message tonight, a short devotional message from former vicar Micah Drengler, fourth year seminarian, you'll hear from him. And now as we prepare for worship, uh, one last thing, especially for kids, I want to invite Naomi Moon, our children's minister, to help our kids get ready for this service in your home right now. Hello everybody, my name is Naomi, and right now you're about to light your Advent wreath. Kids, I really want you to be a part of lighting the Advent wreath with your family. So watch the flame, watch as you light the candle together, and think about that Jesus is the light of the world. I also invite you to grab your coloring sheet of your own Advent wreath. So you probably got this from one of your Connections teachers. If you don't have one, please let me know and we can mail you one. So this week we are going to draw our hope candle. So if you haven't drawn on it yet, you can use this time to draw it or do it later this week and tape it to your own Advent wreath. I also invite you to grab your own Bible. So maybe you have the Holy Bible for Kids or the Read and Share Bible. So I invite you to grab your own. And today we're gonna to talk about the story of Joseph and when the angel came to talk to him. Hi, we're the Miserakas. We typically worship at the Reliance service. My name is Becca. I'm Jeff. I'm Eve. And baby Eli is actually napping right now. Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We invite you now at home uh, to light your Advent candle at this time. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. We light candles of hope, peace, joy, and love, remembering the promises of God with prayer. We light this candle in hope. We pray. To the one who God, uh, who, the one who gives us hope, thank you for inviting us to this, to this time, time of waiting. waiting. Help, Help us to open, open our eyes so we can see your light. light. Open, open our ears so we can hear your words of hope. Open, open our minds so we can understand you. Open our hearts so we can receive your love. Come along, expected Jesus. We are waiting for you. Born to set your people free From our fears and sins Release us by your death on Calvary Israel's strength and consolation Hope to Born your people to deliver 
from God's Word. Our reading is from Matthew 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, he resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thanks be to God. So like pretty much everybody, Joseph had his own hopes. He had hopes for success as a carpenter. He had hopes to marry a nice girl from a good family, and he had hopes to start a family with her. But Joseph had another hope, a bigger hope, a hope he shared with all of his people, with all Israel, a hope he had inherited, a hope in the promise that God was going to set the world right, a hope for a Messiah. But Joseph was a patient man, too. Carpentry is a job that takes a lot of patience. And in addition to that, he, his people, and his forefathers have been waiting for the fulfillment of their hope in that promise for centuries. Now we have a lot of hopes, too. So what's something that you really hope for? And how long have you been waiting? Yeah, take a few seconds, a few minutes maybe, to pause this and discuss with the people around you or with yourself. What's something you really hope for? And how long have you been waiting for it? But hope and patience can be tested. They can be tested by disappointment. And we've all experienced disappointment to some extent. Disappointment is when something you hoped for doesn't happen when you thought it would happen or doesn't happen at all. Maybe it was something small. You've been working really hard on a recipe, practicing all day, but then you left the oven unaccompanied for just a few seconds, and you come back and it's all burned. Or maybe you've been waiting for a package. You were going to get somebody a present. It was going to come on time. Their eyes were going to light up when they saw it. So you've been checking the tracking number on your email, but you get that email that says the package has been delayed. Or maybe your disappointment was something bigger. Maybe you had planned for a road trip for a long time, and then your car breaks down before you even get out the driveway. Or maybe you've been sending in job application after job application, and they all get rejected. Now, we can hope for something that doesn't come when we think it should, or we can hope for something that doesn't come at all. That's disappointment. And disappointment can make us react any number of ways. You can feel let down. You can get angry. You can do something you wouldn't normally do. Or maybe disappointment leads you to give up on that hope. So take some time to pause this and discuss with the people around you or with yourself this next question. Can you think of a time when you were disappointed? And how did you react? Now let's return to Joseph and his hopes. He had hoped to marry a girl named Mary, to start a family with her. They were engaged. It seemed like a sure thing. Maybe he was already planning what their life would look like together. But then something happened that seemed to shatter Joseph's hopes. Mary was already pregnant. To Joseph, that seemed like a deal breaker. So much for those hopes. And he had a few options as to how he could react to this disappointment. He could get angry. He could try and get even with Mary. 
Or maybe he could just get let down and quietly let his hopes go. But Joseph was a patient man. Whether or not he had made up his mind, before he acted, before he did anything, he went to sleep. Maybe he was hoping to wake up with a clear head. Or maybe he was just tired, hurt, and heart sick from disappointment. We don't know. But what we do know is that as he was sleeping, God sent him a message. An angel of the Lord spoke to Joseph in his dream and gave him a message of hope. This baby wasn't a deal breaker. This baby that Mary was carrying was from God. This wasn't something that was going to ruin his hopes of getting married to Mary. No, this baby was a hope for his marriage and a hope for all peoples. This baby was going to be Jesus. The hope that his people had been waiting for for centuries. The hope that God was going to put the world right through this baby. In this message of hope, Joseph got more than he bargained for. Joseph got more hope than he could have possibly imagined. Now we have our own hopes too, some bigger than others, some more likely than others. These days, most of us have some kind of hope that the world is going to start to look normal again. We hope that things will start to make sense again, that we'll be able to do things like we did before. And I know that this hope has tested a lot of our patience. And I know that this time has disappointed a lot of your hopes. So what can we learn from Joseph? What can we learn about his hope and patience for us today? Well, the first thing is really practical. Sleep on it. I'm not saying you're going to wake up with all the answers. I'm not going to say that you're going to wake up and your hopes are going to be fulfilled. Now, sleeping doesn't fix everything. But in the midst of disappointment, in the midst of not knowing what to do, because of our hope in Jesus, we're able to sleep to lie down and give all our troubles to God, to say the world is going to turn without me for a few hours. God is going to handle this. What's more, we can learn from Joseph to listen to God, to not go when we're disappointed and do the first thing that comes into our head, but to listen to God. Now, I'm not saying that an angel is going to talk to you in your dreams, but we have God's ear in prayer. He promises to hear us, and to answer us. God speaks to us in his word, in the words of the Bible. Now listening to God can take some practice, and it can take a lot of patience, but when we take the time to listen to God, whether or not we get the answer we want, we admit that we don't know what to do, but we know someone who does know just what to do. And that person was the hope of Joseph, the hope of his people, and our hope too, that hope is Jesus. We look to the greater hope we have in him, that he's going to set the world right. He promised it, he started it, and he is going to finish it. And we have a hope that sure, a hope that certain, a hope that big. The rest of our disappointments, however serious, however painful they might be, seem to pale in comparison in that sure and that certain hope in the promise that Jesus is the one who has, is, and will set the world right. Friends, would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, all of our hope rests and hinges on you. You are the hope of all people, the hope of this world. During this Advent, turn our eyes to you and the hope we have and the promise that you fulfill in the midst of disappointments. Show us what we should do and remind us that you are our hope. In your name we pray, amen. We come now to a time of prayer in your home. I'm just going to give you some direction for prayer and then you're going to pray right where you're at. If you're by yourself, it's a time for personal prayer. If you are with a family or a spouse or friends, it's a time to pray with them. And you can talk about how you might wanna pray. Maybe one person just prays for everybody, 
Maybe you pray in a circle, you go around. Maybe there's a time of silence where you all pray together. You can determine how you want to pray, but I wanna guide your time of prayer with this question. As we talk about hope and the candle of hope, what needs hope? Hope in the world in general, and what needs hope in your life? That's a place to focus your prayers. What needs hope? Call upon the God of hope to bring his hope, to bring comfort, to bring his presence to that particular place where hope is needed. So right now, you can go ahead and pray right where you're at. You can push pause on this recording, pray, and then you'll join me back again for the Lord's Prayer and Benediction. We're gonna conclude our time of prayer now by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. He is your hope. Go now into a dark world with the light upon you. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. shall come to you.